Happy midnight, everybody, and welcome back to Professor Moonshine's Redstone 101. This is episode 3, and today we're going to be taking a look at powered blocks and what it means for a block to be powered. Now, a powered block isn't a redstone component in the same way that others are. You know, I can't go into the creative inventory, go to the redstone tab, and pick out a powered block. But it is a simple enough concept and fundamental enough concept that I think we should go over it. And either way, it's pretty helpful to consider powered blocks as components, even though tons of different blocks can be powered blocks. So yeah, hopefully today in the video, I will be able to successfully describe to you what it means for a block to be powered, because it's going to crop up a lot as we continue the series. Let's head on over to the Redstone Lab and talk about powered blocks. So what do I mean by a powered block? What does it mean for a block to be powered? All that really means is that we have a signal running into the block so that the block itself acts as a kind of power source. If I turn this on, you can see the electrical signal is going into this block and you can think about it like it's filling this block with power, kind of like a battery. So if I were to place things next to this block, the redstone lamp is able to get lit just by being next to the block that's powered. This works on all sides. Um, if we were powering it from below, it would work uh, I could place a lamp here and it would get powered. So essentially what it means for a block to be powered is to have a signal running into the block. So what kinds of blocks can become powered this way? The, there are two requirements for a block in order for it to be able to be powered. Number one, it has to be a solid block. So that excludes glass, leaves, um, light sources like glowstone and sea lanterns that are considered transparent. So th those are non-solid blocks and would not be able to be powered. I can show you guys that right now by turning this back on, just grabbing a piece of glass and placing it here. See this redstone lamp is not able to be lit, and that's because glass cannot be a powered block. The second requirement for a block to be able to be powered is that it's a full block. So this is going to exclude things like stairs or slabs. You can see if I place a stair here, this isn't able to get powered. Uh, and that does, it doesn't change whether I place it like that, you know, all over. Um, that's going to, anything that's not a full block, so stairs, slabs, walls, can also not be powered blocks. Now, there are some redstone component blocks that also seem to fit this bill. They look like full blocks, and they look like solid blocks. And you'll be happy to know that at least some of these can be used to, as power block candidates. For example, you can power this redstone lamp block and it'll also power adjacent ones. This also works with dispensers and later droppers. But not all the blocks that look like they could be powered blocks will actually work. For example, observers are not considered a solid block even though they might look like it. And pistons, because they extend, are not considered full blocks. So all that to say, some redstone components can act as powered block candidates, others cannot. So again, for a block to be able to be powered, it has to be a solid block, and it has to be a full block. Those are the two conditions for a block to be able to be powered. Now, blocks can be powered in one of two ways. Either they're strong powered or they're weak powered. You may also hear these be called hard powered and soft powered. Those are the same thing. Strong powered is the same as hard powered. Weak powered is the same as soft powered. All right, so on the left, we have a strong powered block, and on the right, we have a weak powered block. I'll go over why each of those is what they are in a minute, but for now, just take my word for it. Let's now go over the differences of how strong versus weak powered blocks work. So like I showed earlier, both kinds of powered block are able to power components that are directly adjacent to them, like these lamps. Where they differ is that a strong powered block is able to power a signal coming out of it. So if we were to take a signal out of any of the directions of this power block, it can, it can be powered. So these signals are both being powered by this block. Let's try that with this one and see what happens. No power. So weak powered blocks cannot transmit a redstone signal to redstone dust. This also works on a vertical level. So this hard powered block can power redstone on top of it and redstone below it. All of these redstone lines are getting powered by the powered block. And with the soft powered line, uh, those should not connect. This cannot be powered by the block, nor can redstone underneath. Now, with this soft powered block, we can take a repeater, taking this block as an input, and then power a signal out of that, but this requires a repeater, whereas with the hard powered block, we don't need a repeater. This block is just strong powered, and it's able to transmit a signal. Again, the weak one requires a repeater. If we don't have the repeater, we don't get a signal, and the strong one can just do it on its own. So to review, both kinds of powered blocks can power redstone components next to them, but only a hard powered block can power redstone dust lines next to it. A soft powered block can't do that. Next, let's talk about what makes a block hard versus soft powered. 
So a block is soft powered if the only thing running into it is redstone dust. If it's just redstone dust that's going into the block, the block is always going to be soft slash weak powered. This also works with redstone dust running along the top of a block. If I were to power this, all of these blocks become weak powered. I can prove that by coming over here. See, we can't take a signal out of these blocks, but if I were to place redstone next to them, they're all able to transmit a signal to these components. So a block is weak powered if it's powered only by redstone dust. Now, if a block is powered in any other way, it's a hard powered block. This includes running a signal into it using a repeater. Also later we'll see comparators can do this. This also includes directing a signal upwards by use of a redstone torch. So this block is hard powered. I'll do signals so you can see. And lastly, just taking a power source of any kind Pow hard powers this block. So we have a lever here that's hard powering the block. Or if we were to step on a pressure plate, this is also hard powering the gray wool block. The last thing I'll mention about powering blocks is that a block cannot transmit power to another adjacent block. So we'll illustrate that here. We have a redstone signal coming into this block, which makes it hard or soft. Hard powered. This is a hard powered block. So we can test that by doing this. We can place a redstone lamp on it and see that it's working. But that doesn't go further into this block. This block isn't powering this lamp, and it's not able to power any kind of redstone signal. So a powered block can't transfer its power to an adjacent block. That also won't work to the left or to the right. So that's it guys, that covers all the material for the powered blocks class. Let's go ahead and review some of the things we learned. Number one, what does it mean for a block to be powered? Block being powered means that a signal is running into the block so that the block itself acts as a kind of power source. Two, the only kinds of blocks that can become powered are full solid blocks. No glass, no slabs, no leaves, and things like sea lanterns and glowstone are also not going to work. Three is that there's two kinds of being powered. We have strong powered and weak powered, also called hard and soft powered. Strong slash hard powered blocks act like a battery and can power components adjacent to them. They can also power redstone signals that come out of them. A block is strong powered if it's being powered by things like repeaters, levers, redstone torches, or other components. Then we have weak powered blocks. Weak powered blocks are powered only by redstone dust. A weak powered block can power adjacent components, but it can't pa power a redstone dust line that comes out of it. So those are the two kinds of powered blocks. Finally, for number four, we learned that power blocks do not power other blocks that are adjacent to them. If anyone in the comments feels like it, go ahead and count how many times I said power in that clip. It might actually pain me to know. Alright guys, with that out of the way, you, you know what's coming. It's quiz time! I'm going to go ahead and construct a redstone puzzle and see if you guys can use your newfound knowledge of power blocks to solve it. Alright guys, here's problem number one. I've constructed a circuit and I want to see if you guys can predict what's going to happen when I flick that lever right there. I'll give you guys a moment to look at the problem and think of your answer. Got your answer? Awesome. So I'll go ahead and flick the lever. And neither of the lamps turned on. So if you guessed that neither of the lamps would turn on, good job, you got this problem right. If not, I'll go ahead and explain why not. So the very first block that this signal goes into is a glass block, which is a transparent block, meaning it can't become powered. This means that the signal can't progress any further than this block right here. So it never reaches this lamp, nor does it continue on to reach this lamp. Now I'll construct problem number two. Here's problem number two. It's another small circuit, and I'll go ahead and fly around so you can see from a few different angles. And again, I just want you to think to yourself, see if you can predict what would happen when I flick this lever. I'll give you guys a few more seconds. All right, and I'll flick the lever now. All right, so the correct answer was the blue lamp. If you got both of these correct, good job. You get an A plus on the quiz. Uh, I don't, I, don't, I don't really care about grades all that much. You guys are all doing great. You guys are all here learning. Good, good for you. Good, good for you. But anyways, I'll go ahead and explain why this was. So this first block takes the redstone signal and becomes soft power. This means that it can't power this redstone next to it, meaning the red lamp never gets a chance to turn on. Now, even though this is soft powered, we can use a repeater to take a signal out of it anyways. And a repeater going into another block makes this one strong powered. So we have a weak powered block here but a strong powered block here. The strong powered block is able to light the redstone, which is able to light the blue lamp. So that is the solution to problem number two.
So, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes Episode 3, our class about powered blocks. If you have any questions pertaining to powered blocks, leave them in the comments, and I'll be sure to get to as many as I can. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, but no worries if not. And as always, your homework is to shine on, little stars. Shine on.